because okay, so I never, I don't want to say never saw this because I could have saw it, just don't remember this. Yeah, there you go. You know, because, but we've talked about, just here in the last couple weeks, we talked about Ishmael and Isaac, right? And how Ishmael uh, represents the flesh, and when, you know, you go into Galatians and it talks about he, the, the bondage that that is correlated with, and Isaac, he's the son of promise, and you know, that's freedom, and it represents the spirit, and, and that, that was a couple chapters ago, and then last week we talked about Hagar, right? And we all, Egypt is a picture of the world, it's a type in scripture, so when it talks about Egypt, we can correlate, correlate that with the world, so that also being of the flesh, and so here now we're, we're, we're still moving on, and now we're talking about circumcision, and really we all know, I mean, I would assume we're all adults here. Yeah, we're women, but yeah. I have I have three boys, so I know what circumcision is. Yeah. Um, but it's about flesh, and so it's interesting how really this theme keeps going throughout. I mean, we can even look back at Cain and Abel and go, "Huh." It, to me, I look at it now and I go, "It really wasn't about what their sacrifices were." It was really about a, either a heart of flesh or a heart of spirit. Yeah. And I think we're going to continue seeing that. You know, when, when even when we get into uh, Joseph, when we get into more as Isaac is an adult, Jacob and Esau, we're going to continue to see this theme, right? And the reality is it goes clear, it's all throughout. How can we have a line of redemption if we don't have a need for redemption? And that's really what this is. So, I want you to put on different glasses today, and actually from here on out, as we study the book of Genesis, and really in your everyday living, is we really need to start with this picture of everything in our life is either flesh versus spirit. That's really what it comes down to. I look at my own personal life and I go, yeah, that's flesh. I'd like to think that's spirit. You know what I mean? And I can see this constant battle and this constant war. And that, ladies, is really what it's all about. So when we go on into um, chapter 17, if we just take chapter 17, we're going to see that this thing of circumcision and really what it means and what it was meant to be. But I think what we need to do from us looking back is that we need to go, okay, well, how is this going to apply in my life right now? Because we're, uh, we're all winners. But if we look and we see where circumcision was meant to be and where it has come to now, we'll get a pretty good idea of what we need to do with it. So, all right. So number one is the sign of the covenant. I know you guys went through this in your groups, but uh, Genesis uh, chapter 17, that's, I don't want to say that's our landing place because we're going to be all over. Um, I was a little surprised at how much scripture really talks about circumcision. <laughs> it's actually, it's, uh, and it just kept coming and coming. I'm like, wow, okay. Um, this is my covenant, which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man, child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. So here we have this sign of the covenant, which is circumcision, right? <coughs> really what circumcision means, it's, it's a cutting away of the unclean, Okay? But really what God uses it in this sense is it's a covenant of faith. When I first started thinking about this, I was thinking, yeah, it's a covenant of faith. It was showing the sign of Abraham's faith. And we'll go into a bunch of verses in, in Romans and such. But really what we need to remember is, is that it's not just a covenant of faith. It's a covenant that God's righteousness was imputed to Abraham by faith. So it wasn't that the circumcision was a sign necessarily of Abraham's faith. It was a sign of 
God's righteousness that had now been imputed to Abraham. And Abraham took that by faith. Okay, so we're going to kind of, some of that is semantics, but really if we just step back and just get a glimpse of, of that little twist there, we see, because sometimes we do things because we think it's of us, when really it's not of us. And that's what has happened with circumcision. It's become an act of the will versus what the sign was, what it was supposed to be, what it was intended for. All right, so I don't have mine, or mine has no blanks. So if I miss a blank, sorry. Um, so let's move on. So the, the covenant of faith was really a physical reminder of what had already taken place. So let's turn our Bibles to Romans chapter 4. And we might, I'll try not to move too quickly, but um, I, we've got a lot of verses that I want to read. Okay, Romans chapter 4, verse 9. And we're going to read through 12. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in incircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed into them unto them also, and the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. Okay, so there's a lot of words being thrown around here. Circumcised, uncircumcised, blah, 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 blah. Really what it comes down to is that the circumcision happened, the righteous, this can, this can get really confusing about all this. Abraham was not a Jew. Okay? I know that you guys probably all know that. But here he's the father of the nation, right? Okay, so he actually was circumcised when he was in uncircumcision. He is a Gentile. He is not a Jew. Okay? So what this passage is saying, okay, was the righteousness imputed to Abraham in uncircumcision or in circumcision? Well, if we go back, we've already studied all this, right? When was Abraham's right when was God's righteousness imputed to Abraham? In uncircumcision or circumcision? Uncircumcision. One more time. Uncircumcision. In uncircumcision, right? So we know that really the circumcision was not a mean of the faithfulness or of salvation, right? It was merely a mark. It was a permanent mark of an everlasting covenant, of a permanent covenant. That covenant, ladies, is still playing out today. <laughs> no. Sorry. <laughs> you can remove a tattoo. You cannot put back the force That's cancer. Right. That's right. <laughs> <Yes>. Right? <laughs> so really, that needs to be a focus. That is, we have to remember that. Okay? All right, so moving on. Number one, Abraham believed God. So we just read that that circumcision really pointed to the righteousness of God that Abraham had faith in. Okay? Number two is Abraham obeyed God. Okay, what did God tell Abraham? Audience participation. Get circumcised, but not just him, right? Who else? The whole household had to be done. So get this, right? We all know that Ishmael represented the flesh. Isaac represented the, the spirit. Ishmael was circumcised, right? Okay, so we know that there's something weird going on here. So we know that Abraham obeyed. So circumcision was a sign to Abraham that he was born of flesh and is flesh. 
So that which is born of flesh is flesh. Okay? And the funny thing here is, and it never really dawned on me, through all of this, that circumcision, do you think it might have been just coincidence that the circumcision took place on the part that procreates for a seed? Interesting thought, right? And let's look at the timing of things. He gets circumcised after Abra after God tells Abraham, or right in the, that time when, when God says, No, 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 Abraham. The seed's not from Ishmael. It's going to come from Sarah. So really what God was saying is, Your flesh, just because you can have a baby, Abraham, that's not what this is about. So that's why they... God waited even longer, didn't he? We find out that it's, it's, several, it's a couple more years before Sarah gets... You know what? God just made sure that it was all dead. Yeah. <laughs> it had nothing to do with procreation. It had nothing to do that Abraham could go have a baby with Hagar. Because Abraham's body was dead, probably. Sarah's body was dead. And here's this circumcision that comes on the part that is the procreation part. What a reminder. What a reminder to Abraham that, you know what, this is really not about you and what you can do. This is about me. All right. I, I, I find it just amazing that God really, he waited until the flesh was incapable of providing the seed. What a picture. All right, so then comes, so we have this covenant of circumcision, okay? We're going to move on. We've already been here. We've talked about it. You've talked about it in your groups. You all understand. We all get that you know, Abraham was not a Jew. He was, circum he was circumcised not as a Jew, right? We get all of that. So now we're going to move into the law of circumcision. Because really what came down now is, number one is, it became a requirement of the law. Okay, you go into Leviticus, and it says, God tells them, tells Moses, all the baby, baby boys on the eighth day have to be circumcised. So now, it's not just, it still is a sign of the covenant that God had made with Abraham, but now it's moved a little bit differently. Now it's a mark of God's chosen people. All the baby boys, day eight. Well, being Jews, they come up with, now it has become a requirement of being got a part of God's chosen people, right? But now, as it moves through history, it becomes a requirement of salvation. Let's turn to Acts, chapter 15. verse 1. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So, just like the Jews, right? We know they live by the law, right? The Pharisees and all that, the whitewashed tombs and all that, right? We all know those stories, those accounts. But now they've done it with this sign. They've done it with circumcision. And a lot of Paul's writings, that's what he's writing about, is he's going down and, and he's kind of hammering these churches, especially like Galatia, the, the church at Galatia, because that's what they were saying is, you cannot be saved. And they were, he, a lot of times they talk to the Gentiles. You can't be a part of this unless you get circumcised. It was part of their law. You can't be... Man, yeah, that just doesn't work. You can't be saved if you're not. You have to become a Jew outwardly. That's basically what they were saying. All right, so number two, just like, I mean, we can look all through history. Now their circumcision has become a source of pride and a badge of honor. We're God's chosen people. We have the permanent mark of the permanent, of the everlasting covenant. And you can't be a part of that.
Let's turn to Galatians chapter 6. Verse 12 and 13. And again, this is Paul, and he's, he's kind of throwing it out there at these guys. As many as desire to make a fair show of the flesh, in the flesh, they constrain you to be circumcised. So what he's saying is, okay, you know, you're all worried about the flesh here, and these people, the, the, the Jews are wanting you. They're making it a rule that you have to be circumcised. Only lest they should suffer persecution for the cross of Christ. For neither they themselves who are circumcised keep the law, but desire to have you circumcised that they may glory in your flesh. So really this circumcision thing all became a, it was all a show. It was all about the flesh. He says, you know, you require circumcision by the law, but you don't even keep the law. But yet you want these Gentiles who are coming in, you want them to get circumcised so you can glory in that, in their flesh. That's all it was about. And what are you doing? Huh? My son is back there taking pictures. Sorry, that was like a total distraction. So here, what they thought now is here is this sign, and this sign brought favor from God. We have favor. We're God's chosen people. We got the sign. Here we are. And what we need to realize, and this is, is A, um, actually let's turn to Romans chapter 2 first. Let's, let's read the verse first. It just, you know, when, when you put the verse first in the outline, it just doesn't look as pretty. <laughs> I think that was flesh. <laughs> All right, Romans 2, 17 through 25. Thou art called a Jew, and resteth in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in the darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the truth of the law. So what Paul's saying is, you've got all of these things. And these are positive things, right? He, he, you know, he tells them that they know his will, they approve of the things that are most excellent, more excellent, they're, they're instructing out of the law, uh, they're a light to them in the darkness, an instructor of the foolish, so they're doing all the right things. And he says in, in 21, Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself. Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou, thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? Thou that makest thy boast of the law through breaking the law, dishonoreth God. For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you as it is written. For circumcision verily profiteth, if thou keepeth the law... But if thou be a breaker of the law, thy circumcision is made uncircumcision. Really what he's saying is, you can know the word of God, you can hear the word of God, you can teach the word of God, you can discipline with the word of God, you can do all those things right, but you know what? It does not give you the righteousness of God. That's what Paul is telling them, is you have missed the boat, you have all these good things, but you're missing the heart of God. I look at that and I go, uh, this totally spoke to me, is you're missing the point, Kelly. You're missing the heart of God. I so want the heart of God. I don't want to be the person that just, yeah, I know the word of God. I hear the word of God. I use the word of God in relation to other people's. I want the heart of God in everything I do. And quite honestly, ladies, our churches in America, we're missing the point. That's why we have no power. That's why we have no conviction. We're the church of the do's and the don'ts. Don't do this, do that. And we think that that is giving us the righteousness of God. And it's not. We're right.
right there, smack dab in the middle of Romans. We're more concerned about what the flesh looks like and our behaviors than our hearts. So here they have be they had the outward mark. I just have to remember what we have read and haven't read. Have we been in Romans two yet? Yep. We just we just stopped at twenty five. So we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna continue reading. Therefore, if the uncircumcision keeps the righteousness of the law, shall not his uncircumcision be counted for circumcision? And shall not uncircumcision, which is by nature, if it fulfill the law, judge thee, who by the letter and circumcision dost thou transgress the law? For he is not a Jew, which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. Right there, ladies. And he, Paul is just hammering him. Being a Jew and being God's chosen people has nothing to do with, the, with your outside look. It has nothing to do with that you've cut the foreskin off. It has nothing to do with this flesh. And you missed it. I know, right? <laughs> exactly right. Really what it has come down to now, this is where the crux is. There's no heart. That's legalism, ladies. And quite honestly, we have tried to define, redefine, do all this thing, but really what legalism is, is we have no heart of God. We've got the law. We've got his word. We go to church. We check the box. We do all those things. And quite honestly, we obey the word. I mean, that, that's been a mantra of mine for, you, you do what it says. But we're missing the point. I can follow this book, and so should we. But you know, when this book becomes the burden, that's law. That's legalism. Because what did, what did Jesus say? My yoke is easy and my burden is light. That means it's him in us that's going to produce the obedience. And it's nothing for us. It's just, it's a natural outflow of our love for him. Because we have the heart of God. Yeah. So good. <laughs> so really then, what it has become, let's turn to Galatians 5. Thank you, Cherie, for that little... <laughs> It's interesting, Kelly, that he even tells them when he says, he tells them that you are sons of your father, the devil, and they go, we, no, we're, we're sons of Abraham. And he goes, no, if you were sons of Abraham, you would see me. You would know me through Abraham. So they claimed the Abrahamic covenant, and yet they missed him completely, and that's what he said. The Abraham, if you knew Abraham, you would know me. And the, the, the interesting thing is, is in that card, they missed the whole purpose behind right. the covenant. Right, right. And that's why Paul's going through what it is. It, if we could just get a, like that that minute light bulb that just went ching ching and you go, whoa, mm -hmm. and then it goes away, that's all I'm looking for today, ladies, because really, we, we live here. I live here. And I know that if I can just look at the things that go on in my life, and this is what's kind of spurring all this, is I'm tired of living by the law. I'm tired of bondage. I'm tired of people telling me, well, you got to do this because this is what Scripture says. And then I go, oh, oh, yeah, i got to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I want to obey Scripture. Please, if you hear that I don't want to obey, that, that you're missing the point. My point is I want to do it out of heart of love, not out of heart of the law. Because the law killeth. The law is for the lawless, is what, Timothy, what it says in Timothy. All right. And really, <laughs> what what the the heart the with no heart and legalism? The funny thing is, is we have no heart of God, but yeah, what does it produce in us? It produces this, this yeah, this puffing up and this self righteousness and this pride and it's hypocrisy exactly. 
And, and so it's interesting that really what it does is it brings the focus. We don't have a heart of God, but we have a heart for ourselves. Because yeah. we think we're doing it. Yeah. We think we're right. We think we're right with God. And that's why God, that's why Jesus could tell the Pharisees and the religious leaders, you're, you're whitewashed too. Yeah. And just like Aunt Linda said, is you, you, you say you know Abraham, but yet if you knew him, you'd know me. All right, Galatians 5, 1 through 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. That's what no heart brings, ladies. It's a yoke of bondage. And we see that with the Pharisees, really. They were so attached to that law, and they couldn't, they had no wiggle room. Boy, they were following that law. It was bondage. It was slavery. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. For we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. If you're going to live by the law, You've got to follow the whole law. That's what the whole point of the law was, right? The whole point of the law was to point us to Christ because he knew we couldn't fulfill the law. But somehow, in the midst of our flesh, we have gotten this idea that we can. That's what box checking is lately, ladies. Well, I, I'll just check this box and I'm good. I go to church. I'm good. I read my Bible every day. Don't have a clue what I just read. Or I might know... I might know what I read, but I don't know what I read. Well, check that box too. It's bondage. The thing is, with in the life of a slave, really what that is, a slave has no freedom, right? It's a, it's a list of do's and don'ts. Do this, do that. Do this, do that. It's law. When we are under the law, I, I heard an example and I thought, this is, this is so what we have done. The law says do not commit adultery. So the law can make you not cheat on your husband. But the law of love, that's really what we're after here, is the heart. The law cannot make you love your husband. Only the law of love can. And that's the difference. That's why God. That's why Jesus said, "Oh no, no, no! Now, if you look upon the woman, you've committed lust in your heart." The law is to love the Lord thy God, love that your neighbor as yourself. It's love because you know what? And, and, and it's interesting because we've had this discussion in leaders meeting before. Is I can't change necessarily how I feel about something. If I love tacos, I love tacos. Yeah. <laughs> and who doesn't love tacos? Right? I know, right? So good. So good. <laughs> and I think that's where we are. We don't understand that. We think, okay, well, I could just follow the rules. I could do what I'm doing. And then all of a sudden, these feelings are just going to follow. But no. That's what we don't understand. It goes back to the, the adultery thing. The law says don't commit adultery. But in your heart, you're committing adultery already because you're lusting after someone else. So the law can't make you love your husband even though we're supposed to love our husbands. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Which brings us to number three. And that is the circumcision not of hands and the circumcision of our hearts. Even, we can even go back to Moses, and Moses caught this shift when he tells them to circumcise their hearts. Because now Moses realized, and Paul realized, circumcision is not of the flesh, it's of the spirit. Because really, that 
picture of cutting off the unclean, that's what we need to be doing in our own life. We cannot be come before a holy God unclean. Christ has to clean it, right? We can't do that. You know, what knife are you going to get in there and like cut? Like, does this heart even have foreskin? <laughs> no. No? But do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. All right, so let's look at some of these. So we're going to look at a circumcision that is not physical but spiritual. So A, we've got some verses. Um, well, let's look. What time, where, where are we on time? Oh, boy. We're not good on time. So I'm going to trust that you're going to go back and look at these verses. So there's one in Deuteronomy. There's also one in Jeremiah. And there's also one in Acts where they were circumcised physically, but their hearts were covered in flesh is what he talks about. Um, one of them is Moses telling them, you need to circumcise your hearts. And that's, I mean, here he's talking to the Israelites here in the, I believe, anyway. All right. B is the Lord circumcises our hearts, and that's in Deuteronomy 30. That is also Moses telling them that God's got to change your heart. Um, and then C is putting off the sin of the flesh, which we read in Romans. Um, let's turn to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians is right after Philippians. Colossians 2, verse 10 through 13. And ye are complete in him, which is the, the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And I'm going to flip over to Romans, because I don't think we actually read both of those verses. Uh, for he is, a, is not a Jew, which is one outwardly, neither is that circumcision, which is outward in the flesh. But he is a Jew, which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter whose praise is not of men, but of God. Which moves us to D, which is really the thrust of all of this, is if you look in Ezekiel, and he, let's read it. We just got to read it. Um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, 36. 26 through 27. And I know you guys have heard this. A new heart also will I give you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you, and cause you to walk in my statutes, and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And I'm going to flip over to Galatians real fast too. 6.15. Because you can just flip to Galatians real fast. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Here's the gist of it, ladies, is that God is the one who circumcises our hearts. God is the one at that moment of salvation where he cuts the unclean out. He's the one who performs the, the circumcision. He's the one, the circumcision without hands. And it's that new heart, like in Ezekiel, it says, it causes you to obey his statutes and judgments. It's not something that we have to go, oh, being a Christian is such a burden I must bear. I've got to go to church. I've got to love my kids. I've got to love my husband. I've got to read my Bible for 20 minutes. Oh, or is it supposed to be 30 minutes a day? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't we do that? I mean, we may not play the whole, but in my mind, I know that's something that I'm learning, is, is to walk in freedom. To walk in truth. Because if I have a new heart, my heart is naturally going to gravitate, I shouldn't say naturally, it is going to miraculously gravitate to God and to his word and to his ways. Because we know my natural heart is wicked. 
desperately deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Right? But my heart of God, my heart for God, should be the natural outcome of the Spirit. That's why he says walk in the Spirit. Don't, don't mess with the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. It's now universal as well as in, instead of just it being male-oriented now. Yeah. Because women have hearts. <laughs> right? And that's why he says, you'll know them by your love. He's not going to say, you know what, Joanna, they're going to know you because you go to church every Sunday. And not only morning service, but you also go to evening service and Wednesday night service too. <laughs> you got it. You know, he doesn't say, Cherie, you didn't read your Bible today, so your neighbor's not going to know you're a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what we do. Everything we should do should be motivated by our love for Him. And ladies, if we don't have our love, that love for Him, then we need to stop and go, something's not firing. Something's amiss. Jesus gave us a new birth. And he filled us with the Holy Spirit. And it's that Holy Spirit within us that we should be walking with. That's why he gave him to us. So that we can have his heart. All right, let's turn to Romans. I'm going to wrap this up, hopefully rather quickly. Romans chapter 4. 1 through 11. What shall we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Saying, Blessed are, the, are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And he goes on. We need to remember, ladies, that this blessed, about this blessedness, it's imputed. His righteousness is imputed to us, and it's without works of any kind. I know you all know that. I know that most of us can probably say Ephesians 2, 8, 9 by memory, that it's not of works that no man should boast. But ladies, it's time that we start acting like that, and that we walk like that. Sometimes we get complacent, we get lazy, and we just fall back onto our daily habits and our disciplines instead of jumping in with both feet to serve the Lord and to love the Lord and to walk in the Spirit and to walk in freedom and truth. Abraham was not blessed because he was circumcised. He was blessed. He was circumcised because he was blessed. Which is the same. We do not get blessed because of our works. We have works because we're blessed. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for who you are, Lord. I pray that you will open our eyes to your truth. You will open our eyes to where we have followed the law. Lord, I know in my own life I do this very thing, Lord. Bring it to our attention. Tug on our hearts. Prick our hearts. Convict us, Lord, that we need 
to just walk in your spirit. Walk in your love. Focus on truth. And capture the heart of you. We thank you so much in your name. Amen. Mm -hmm.